I posted a TikTok video talking about topical estrogen and how it relates to anti-aging, and so many of you requested a deeper dive on the topic, so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I'm a board certified dermatologist in Northern California, and I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Aside from you guys requesting it, I really wanted to make this video because as a practicing dermatologist, every day in clinic, I see the effects of what estrogen depletion does to women's skin. And the story often goes like this. It's a woman who comes in who's in her mid forties or early fifties and goes, I really feel like I woke up one day and my skin had completely changed. Like it started sagging and becoming more sensitive and more dry and dull seemingly overnight. And I feel like some people would look at that situation and go, yeah, well, like you're getting older and it caught up to you. But the reality is that time period in your life, sort of like your early to mid forties is where perimenopause, which we're about to talk about sort of starts to come into play. And menopause affects so many systems in our body, our skin just being one of them. But of course, as the dermatologist, I'm going to come at this from a skin focused angle. Also later in this video, I'm going to get into who should, and maybe who should not use topical estrogen. So make sure you stick around for that. Let's start with the basics here. What is estrogen? Estrogen is a hormone produced mainly by your ovaries, but also in part by your adrenal glands and a little bit by your fat cells. And it serves mainly for your sexual and reproductive health. However, over time, we have come to realize that estrogen isn't just a sex hormone, but it also helps with your cardiovascular health, your bone health, your cognitive function. It essentially plays a role in all of the major organ systems in your body. Naturally, as a woman, you are going to have fluctuating levels of estrogen throughout your menstrual cycle. You're also going to have surges of estrogen during pregnancy. And finally, you are going to have a steep drop off of your estrogen levels as you approach and go through menopause. The current definition of menopause is when you have ceased to have menstrual periods for 12 months. And it is really the indication of complete loss of ovarian function and you get a sharp drop off of your estrogen. However, in the years leading up to menopause, you are in something called perimenopause. And when you are in a perimenopausal state, your estrogen is also decreasing and you may feel some of the symptoms that we associate with menopause, like hot flashes, irritability, fatigue, brain fog, and just overall discomfort in your body. Everyone's timeline for going through menopause and perimenopause will be slightly different, but most people will start perimenopause in their forties, but some will start it in their late thirties as well. And as women trend towards losing their estrogen, when they are in a perimenopausal state, this has some significant impacts on the skin. We lose collagen in our skin. We have poorer blood flow, more sensitivity, more dryness. We also lose hyaluronic acid in our skin, which is what gives our skin bounce and plumpness. And when you decrease that, the skin looks dry, crepey, and just less healthy. Wound healing is also dependent on estrogen. So as your estrogen levels fall, your ability to heal also changes and decreases. And the statistic that has really sort of always blown me away is that once you hit menopause, you lose 30% of your skin's collagen within the first five years. But it also explains why when women hit menopause, they feel like their skin suddenly takes a turn for the worst overnight. And this is just what's happening in your skin, but there are so many other negative changes that happen in the body with menopause. And for so long, I feel like the outlook on menopause was just, well, suck it up. This is something that naturally happens to the body and you have to deal with it. And now finally, we are realizing that maybe supplementing with the hormones that are lost during the menopausal period can be incredibly beneficial for overall female wellness and health. It's funny, I was listening to an endocrinologist talk and endocrinologists are doctors who specialize in all hormones. And what she was saying is, you know, you lose any other hormone in your body, your thyroid hormone, testosterone, insulin and you replace it. That is the normal thing that we do. And for so long, we have not done that with estrogen. As a reminder, this video is focusing on topical estrogen replacement. So local application of estrogen to the skin at specific sites. But I do want to note that in menopausal hormone therapy, also known as hormone replacement therapy, in which you are getting systemic doses of estrogen and sometimes progestin as well, that has been shown to improve skin quality and health. As far as skin health and appearance goes, when it comes to 
to estrogen, we know that estrogen deficient skin, so when we are in perimenopause, starts to look and behave differently. And when you apply topical estrogen to the skin, you can get some reversal of those changes. And several studies now exist to support the use of topical estrogen when addressing aging concerns of the skin. And I'll link the studies that I'm referencing in the description box so you can check those out if you want to read them yourself. Now, I will say these studies are pretty small and I will get into the limitations overall of the current data, but these studies have looked at varying forms of topical estrogen and shown that they have helped with things like collagen synthesis, skin thickness, skin hydration, and elasticity. Most of these studies have been done on people who are already in menopause, but the current thinking is if you have estrogen deficient skin, meaning that you are perimenopausal, so typically in in your early 40s and beyond, you could probably benefit from topical estrogen in terms of how it will help your skin. So if all of your estrogen is still there and present in your body, you know, you're in your teens, 20s, 30s, you don't need supplemental estrogen. However, if you are in a different stage of your life where your estrogen levels are dropping off, that's where this can be beneficial. Now we can't just simply go on your age to determine whether or not you are estrogen deficient. This is a process that's going to happen differently in everyone. But what my OBGYN colleagues who I've spoken to about this have said is if you are experiencing other perimenopausal symptoms, whether that's night sweats, new fatigue, brain fog, joint pains, things that are attributed to that drop in estrogen, that's how you can know and where you might start thinking about using supplemental estrogen either systemically or topically. Now, a lot of the questions I got on that TikTok video were, where do I get the estrogen and how do I apply it? Where do I apply it? So for many women, as they approach and go through menopause, they will experience symptoms in the vaginal area, whether that's dryness, atrophy, bleeding, Eating, discomfort, and estrogen can be used topically in those areas to add more suppleness and comfort back to those tissues. I would say probably over the last decade or two, the prescription that has been used the most commonly when it comes to topical estrogen is actually the 0.01 estradiol cream that is typically prescribed for intravaginal use. So when providers were prescribing topical estrogen to be used in other places for anti-aging, principally the face and sometimes the neck and hands, that vaginal estrogen is what we were recommending. And that's still recommended all the time and there's nothing wrong with that. But now there are also compounding pharmacies that will put together varying levels of estriol and estradiol, which are two forms of estrogen that can be used in a topical cream. And there are online companies that specialize in women's health like Muesli and Alloy and Midi, where you can get these prescriptions from as well. And for most women, we are thinking about having people apply it to the face, that's usually where people are noticing the most aging changes, especially like around the eyes, for example. The neck is another common place that people will apply estrogen and the hands as well. And you might say, okay, like why don't I just bathe in topical estrogen? It's affecting all of my skin. Shouldn't I put it everywhere? And we'll get to that point, but of course we have to start thinking about systemic absorption as well. Just because we put it on our skin doesn't mean it's only going to stay there. But if I were counseling a patient on how to appropriately use topical estrogen, I would say you should apply about a pea-sized amount to your face nightly. It's kind of the same way I instruct my patients to apply their retinoid like tretinoin. Now this almost sounds too good to be true, an easily accessible cream that tends to be relatively affordable that rejuvenates the skin. But we should talk about the side effects and the drawbacks, as well as the limitations to the data that exists in regard to topical estrogen. And the side effects I'm going to talk about are a combination of what's been reported in the literature, as well as anecdotal things that I've heard from friends and patients who have tried topical estrogen. So anytime you're applying anything topically to the skin, there is a risk of dryness and irritation. And there are certainly people I know who have tried topical estrogen creams that have developed irritation to the skin that was really uncomfortable and they never wanted to use the product again. Also, some people will report increased vascularity to the skin. And in some respects, that can be good. Having improved blood flow to the skin is really nice. But what some people report is the development of something called angiomas, which are little blood vessel clusters in the skin that are visible and kind of unsightly. The other thing I always think about selfishly because I deal with this is melasma or the worsening of pigmentation problems. Melasma is a disorder of irregular pigment formation typically seen on the forehead, cheeks, upper lip, sometimes on the arms and chest, and it's primarily hormone driven. Yes, you are genetically predisposed to developing melasma, but oftentimes we see it get worse in women when they have surges in estrogen and progesterone, for example, when they start on a birth control pill or when they get pregnant. We know that women who are on menopausal hormone therapy, so who are having systemic doses of estrogen and sometimes progestin can have flares of their melasma, and I've certainly had patients report that when they were using topical estrogen, it made their melasma worse. 
And this is something that's very important to be mindful of because if you're using topical estrogen to improve the quality of your skin, but you're making another skin condition worse, you have to weigh the risk and benefits. Now, those are really like cosmetic side effects that you can have from using topical estrogen, but I do want to spend some time talking about the safety profile of topical estrogen because I think rightfully that's what people are most concerned about. While estrogen does so many wonderful things for our body, there is this concern around supplemental estrogen and whether or not it increases our risk of things like breast cancer and uterine cancer. And this is a very nuanced topic, so I will give an overview here in this video, but the bottom line is this is going to be a discussion between you and your oncologist as well as your gynecologist. When it comes to cancer, there are so many different factors at play when it comes to your personal risk factors and your risk tolerance. So it's really important that any decisions you are making about your health and what products and prescriptions you are using is made among your healthcare team. So things that we know. People who are on menopausal hormone therapy or hormone replacement therapy are at a slightly higher risk of breast cancer. And what we really have to think about here is if topical estrogen applied in small amounts in local areas on the body gives you that same risk. And the reality is that is not fully studied. We do not have long-term data of women applying estrogen cream for cosmetic purposes over long periods of time and what their health outcomes are. However, we do have something that we can kind of extrapolate from, which is, women who apply estrogen locally inside the vagina to deal with some of those perimenopausal and menopausal symptoms, it does not seem to increase their risk of breast cancer or uterine cancer. Essentially, the systemic absorption from local application of estrogen to the vagina does not seem to be significant enough to cause those problems. And what a lot of dermatologists and OBGYNs will say from that is, well, if you are applying estrogen to a mucosal surface, like inside the vagina, and it's not getting systemically absorbed, then you are probably fine applying it to a small surface area of your face or your hands without issue. In fact, it's a general consensus among oncologists and gynecologists that even women who have a history of breast cancer can safely apply vaginal estrogen. However, I think it's really important to note that this is touching on a quality of life issue for these women. Oftentimes when they have gone through therapy for their breast cancer, they are having significant vaginal problems, whether that's atrophy, pain, discomfort, issues with UTIs. And so the benefits of incorporating estrogen in that way far outweigh the small risk of an increased risk of breast cancer. So when we're trying to apply that information to the use of topical estrogen creams for a cosmetic benefit, Benefit, we really have to look at ourselves and think, is that potential risk worth it for that benefit? I do wanna take a second to talk about the risk of uterine cancer as well. For people who take systemic estrogen, if they have a uterus, they also need to be on some form of progestin, which is another hormone, so that their risk of uterine cancer is diminished. Now, studies have also shown that people who use estrogen topically within the vagina don't get enough systemic absorption to increase their risk of uterine cancer, and those women don't need to be on some form of progestin. And so what we can take away from that is if we are applying topical estrogen to other parts of our body, like small areas of our face, we also don't need to be on some type of progestin to protect us against Against uterine cancer. What some doctors will argue, and I understand where they're coming from, is that when you are getting these compounded medications, they're poorly studied, and so we actually don't know how much of that topical is specifically absorbed, and so in theory, you are at risk for uterine cancer or breast cancer. However, this is really just theory, and I totally understand where these doctors are coming from. They're trying to look out for these patients and make sure that people don't develop a uterine or a breast cancer just because they're trying to do something topically for the benefit of their skin appearance and function. But I don't think we should assume from that that estrogen creams everywhere and what's being manufactured today and used properly is dangerous. To summarize, if you personally have had a history of breast cancer, it's going to be a conversation with your oncologist as to whether or not topical estrogen in any form, intravaginally or topically on your skin for cosmetic benefits is worth that small amount of risk. Another question I got is, well, if I'm already on menopausal hormone therapy or hormone replacement therapy, is there additional benefit to applying estrogen cream topically? And although this isn't well studied, what a lot of the leading menopausal experts will say is that yes, there are additional benefits to applying topical estrogen in certain spots on your face or on your body. I also got the question is, if I have a history of blood 
blood clots, can I use topical estrogen? And the answer to that is generally yes. The risk of blood clots with estrogen is when you take estrogen orally and it passes through the liver, that increases your clot risk. However, if you are using estrogen through the skin, like transdermally as a patch, or you're applying it locally to your facial skin or inside the vagina, it does not increase your blood clot risk. Because the use of topical estrogen is not that straightforward and there are some specific nuances, risks, and benefits that need to be part of a proper discussion. In general, as a dermatologist, I feel much more comfortable with my patients obtaining these prescriptions from their OBGYN and or oncologist. These are the doctors following them long-term who are ensuring that they are getting their proper health screening, like their mammograms. And I think if you are using any type of estrogen or hormone therapy, that needs to be followed by a professional who is looking at your health overall. And although as a dermatologist, I take my patient's entire health into consideration, that's not something that falls within my full purview. And as a final thought on all of this, my personal feeling is that topical estrogen cream is really exciting. It's something that personally interests me. And when I get to the point in my life where I am perimenopausal, I will certainly consider it even with having a very strong family history of breast cancer. But I do want to say that the studies that we have so far are quite small. We don't have tons of long-term data yet, but I am hoping that will change because people are more interested in menopause and understanding how to holistically take care of a woman through all phases of her life and not just through her reproductive years. So I'm very invested in this and I will definitely keep an eye out for any new research that comes to light when it comes to topical estrogen creams. But I hope that answered a lot of the questions that you had and will help you make the right decision for yourself. I'm curious, would you try topical estrogen? And if you're out there and you have been using topical estrogen, please let us know what your experience has been in the comments. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video and I'll see you next time.